Hi, this session is about the bottleneck distance. Uh, to get you thinking about bottlenecks, here are two. A ship in a bottle, and on the right, a traffic bottleneck. I'll come back and ask you a question about them at the end. In mathematics, a fundamental task is to determine if two objects are the same. Same might mean they're equivalent, it might mean they're equal, it depends on the context. If they're not the same, the question is how far are they from being the same? So in topology, of course, how far things are apart, and it's natural to think about metrics. So what we want to do here is define a metric on a set of persistence diagrams. So here's an example to work from. Here are a couple of persistence diagrams on the same set of axes. Persistence diagram is a set of ordered pairs, B, I, D, I. Second coordinate is bigger than the first, so it's above the diagonal. And the first is greater than or equal to zero, so it's in the first quadrant. And we want a finite number. So here we have a P and a Q. They both happen to contain five points. So our intuition is that we'd like to pair points from P and Q, measure the distances between them, and whatever that largest distance is be between the paired points, that becomes our distance between the diagrams. So let's see what that might look like here. Okay, so here's a way to pair the points. Uh, it might not be the only one, but let's see. So in the upper top there, in the upper part of it, we see P3 and Q2 paired. On the left, we see Q3 and P2. A little lower, we see P1 and Q5. In the diagonal, we see Q4 and P4. But we've got a problem. We can see that P5 is left unpaired and Q1 is left unpaired. So we'd like to deal with that in some way, but it seems like we can't create a bijection um, and get it to work. Okay, what do we do? we create what's called a partial match. So we have P and Q. We don't really need to have the injection and surjection. What we need is to be able to define the distance, and this will turn out to be sufficient. So a partial match between P and Q is a bijection between a subset of P and a subset of Q. So here's an example for, of a pairing between uh, the two persistence diagrams that we were working with. We have P and Q. Let's match Q2 and P3, Q3 and P2, Q4 and P4, and finally Q5 and P1 the way we had before. But we leave P5 and Q1 unpaired. So given a partial match, we want to measure a distance. So in order to create this distance, we have to do a couple of things first. First, we need to define what's called the L infinity distance that comes from analysis, that's between a pair of points. What we do is we take the difference in the B direction and the difference in the D direction, take the absolute value. We don't know which one will be bigger based on the order. And then we take the maximum of the absolute values. So here are two pictures. On the left, we see that maximum value is in the B direction. That's the L infinity distance. On the right, we see the maximum value is in the D direction, so that's the L infinity distance. Now we also have the unpaired points. So here we've got an unpaired point BD. What we want to do is use the distance between BD and the nearest point on the diagonal. So you can see from the geometry that if we take that nearest point, we get a right triangle, and the legs of the right triangle are the same, and they're both equal to D minus B over two. So what we'll do is we'll use D minus B over two, which is the L infinity distance between the point BD and its nearest point on the diagonal. Okay. With this, we can define something called a cost function. The cost of M will be the maximum value of three quantities. The first quantity is just the maximum or soup of the distances between the points PI and their paired points MPI. The second is we take the unpaired points in P take the maximum value of the distance between those and the diagonal points. That's the one half di minus bi that we've just seen. And we do the same thing for the unpaired points in Q. We get three values. Here they're written as soups. If the sets are finite, it's a max. Then the cost of m will be the maximum of these three values. Well, let's see what we get for our example. 
So here we have a calculation, Q2 minus P3, the L infinity distance is one, for Q3 minus P2 it's two, for Q4 minus P4 it's three, Q5 minus P1 it's two, and finally we have the distances to the diagonal, for Q1 it's one half, for P5 it's three halves. The largest of these values is three, so the cost of M is three. From the cost functions, we can define a bottleneck distance. So if we have two diagrams, P and Q, we define the bottleneck distance dB of PQ between persistence diagrams P and Q is the infimum over all M, partial matchings between P and Q of CM, the cost. So dB is the cost of the most efficient of the partial matches between them. Okay. So the construction above shows that dBPQ is less than or equal to 3 because we found a partial match with cost 3. So the question is, for these points, can you find a partial match for which the cost is less than 3? In that case, we get a, a lower upper bound on the uh, bottleneck distance. So the bottleneck distance is messy to compute. You can imagine for a large set of points to search for all search through all possible partial matches is a long process. However, abstractly, it has the properties of a metric. We can see that if we take dp, p, we get zero. If we have p and q, we take db of pq, it's the same thing as db of qp. And the third one is the triangle inequality, db pr less than or equal to db pq plus db qr. The first two are immediate. I'll leave the third one for you to prove is if, if P and Q are finite. Okay, in the next session, we'll consider the connection between DB and continuity of the persistence construction. That's rather more involved, and it needs a particular example to illustrate it. But one last question, based on the photos on the first page, why is this called a bottleneck distance? And that's the end of this session. Thank you.